Hello and welcome to Course Light, your car brochure channel. And in today's episode, we're going to be looking at the Ford Capri Mark 1 for Ford Friday. Hello and welcome back to Course Light. And if you're new to Course Light, we're a car brochure channel here on YouTube looking at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and sometimes beyond that as well. So if you're into car brochures, car brochure collecting or just a car enthusiast, please consider subscribing and I hope you enjoy the episode. And the episode today is in the 60s. We've got the Mark 1 Ford Capri. This particular brochure is a UK brochure and it's dated October 1969, so pretty early on in the Capri history really. They were produced between November 68 and 1973, unveiled at the January 1969 Brussels Motor Show, and I think sales started around about February 69, so like I said, this is October 69. Now, I picked this particular brochure uh, for a what I think a very good reason is before the facelift the facelift for the Mark 1 happened in 1971 but it's early enough to include the 3 litre version um, around about September 69 so a month before this brochure we got the 3 litre so it's nice to see that in the brochure and really the Capri was all about um, a f an affordable car really but an affordable car with a wide um, selection of engines to meet a wide selection of buying public I guess with those variety of engines nice front cover though isn't it showing this lovely it looks like a sort of a shade of green I'm not sure what shade of green this is but if you do know jot it in the comments but let's zoom in on that main image I think and there it is and I think this main image is really for me what the Capri is all about yes everyone loves the 3 litre don't they of course they do but this is more what the Capri was to me anyway it's a lovely example isn't it love the wheels on the I'm sure they weren't standard wheels but we'll see what became as standard and we got little like packs at this time and we'll certainly go through that as well but if we zoom in on the uh, front wing there yes this sporty front cover picture is a 1300 and this is what i mean i think this is what the capri was already all about really it was all looks and not much going on underneath really particularly these lower end models yeah we all aspire for a three litre but most of us got a, like a 1300 more likely a 1600 which certainly didn't have the power that it looked like it had i guess really it was a a sheep in wolf's clothing you could say anyway let's open the brush up learn a bit more about these mark ones and as we open the front cover we get another example of these early mark ones pre-facelift like i say we'll certainly zoom in on the picture in a moment it's there on the beach i don't know why so many car brochures feature a car on the beach i don't know why um, but i presume at some point this was sold as a brand new car even though it'd been running around in this salt water but there we go we'll start by looking at the text learn a bit more about it and then we'll come back to this main image there we go the introduction love how it starts this brochure actually the quick pre is one of those cars you know the kind you always promise yourself if you ever had the money and of course that slogan or catchphrase the car you always promised yourself was a very successful um, slogan uh, for Ford and I'm sure it captured a lot of imaginations very clever indeed I don't actually know who the actual person who said hey let's put on this for this car the car you always promise yourself I don't know who did but if you do know jot that in the comments but a very clever Ford slogan for sure and it introduces this bro this brochure 
Of course, we realise the shape isn't entirely new. Some of the more glamorous Italian sports models have had something like it before. So there we go. This cheap car, kind of like trying to say it looks like a glamorous sports car. Again, pretty clever to put that in there. What is new is that we produce a car like the Capri at prices you can think about paying. The car itself is a genuine fastback that handles like a sports car with enough room in. I won't continue in a moment, but handles like a sports car. I think that's pushing it a little bit. And then it continues. So enough room um, inside for four adults to spread themselves out. But even though it's a roomy as most family runabouts, the person who really going to get a kick out of the Capri is the driver because the Capri is very much a driver's car right down to the low relaxed straight arm driving position there are six engines to choose from 1300 1600 1300 GT 1600 GT 2000 GT and that all important 3000 GT We've also invented a scheme whereby you can tell your car to meet your own personal requirements. We call it the Capri Custom Plan. Depending on which Capri you choose, there's a custom plan that enables you to add to the inside and the outside, even improve on comfort. And these little uh, sort of option type packs were, I think, a clever little thing to be put on cars this early. So that in the end, you don't just get the car you always promise yourself at a price you can easily afford. You'll virtually get it made to measure. Not quite, but you know, I still think it's a clever idea that they did these um, sort of packs on these early Capris. And then the main image, if we just zoom in on the front lights actually. It's actually a bit of a grainy picture actually when you zoom in, I think it's to do with the lighting this was for... for uh, photographed in but you can certainly see those early headlights with the indicators part of those headlights and of course in 71 they did update this to have the indicators separate again a bit of a grainy image i was trying to kind of like zoom in on that badge i think it's a 1600 this time but it's, like i say it's hard to make out but really the part that i really did like about the mark one making it one of them, I think it's possibly my favourite Capri actually the Mark 1 just because of the styling I do particularly like how it swoops down here and it's got these little extra little bits in there to make a pretty stylish looking car I can certainly see why people wanted to and of course it was a big sales success for Ford it kind of kind of like reminds me of a Mustang actually with this this sort of section here and of course it was touted as you know the European Ford Mustang we do also get these rather lovely interior shots for this Mark 1 as well we'll start with the text though and we'll come back and have a close look at these interior pictures so text wise it says it seats four in comfort we put a combined armrest and door pull on each door and th thanks to the wide opening doors and the fold down action of the front seats you don't have to be working a working contortionist to get in and out of the back. Incidentally the anti-tip lock on the back of the front seats isn't the kind that has you in indulging in feats of strength to get it undone. A quick flick and it's released. And don't worry if you've got kids, if two grown-ups can sit in the back without being too close for comfort, you won't have much trouble fitting a few children in. So, like I say, it's trying to really um, appeal to a lot of people, you know, even a family, a family car, can you believe that? Even saying, you know, you don't have to have a boring car if you've got a family, you can have this like very fancy sporty car and, you know, plenty of room for the children. But if you want to keep the Capri strictly for adults only, individual rear seats with a folding centre armrest are available as part of a Capri custom plan. And again, you know, this sort of option packs you can get, which we'll have a look at later on. 
seats actually look very nice. They look like leather, of course, and it won't be, but they kind of like that like, look about them for sure. They do look quite comfortable. No head restraints at this time, though. Very 60s uh, fashion there. Looks like they've picked someone very small, a small, a very short lady to go in the back there, but nevertheless, there it is. And then a little bit of a shot, very much a 60s shot there of four adults in the Capri looking very happy. And then we look at that so-called roomy back seat. A little bit of a look in the interior, a bit of that sort of cheap fake looking wood that Ford liked to put in at this time. And a little bit of a look at that catch to flip that seat. Then we turn the page, we get a lovely shot of this Mark 1 in action. Number plate there, CWC755G, actually looks looks like it is actually part of the car I don't know if anyone wants to look at that see if that car is still around probably not of course but maybe worth checking I know in a lot of brochures they used to like doctor and play around with the number plates to you know make it look like it's the newest version of the car even though it's the same picture with a oh just an updated number plate but that does look like a genuine photograph you remember the old black number plates interesting stuff I know they change rules in the UK about black number plates blah 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 but looks nice at a proper aged vehicle I think I don't think they ever looked really quite right when they started putting them on newer vehicles or people started putting them on newer vehicles anyway I'm wittering I do realise this the next page is on about safety which is unusual really because you know safety is a very much a big 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 thing now of course but it's showing though, that they were thinking about it then, although, you know, by today's standard, this car, of course, wouldn't meet any sort of crash standards whatsoever, but there it is. We'll certainly look at that again. I think we'll start by just zooming in on that main image, though. There we go, lovely image, isn't it, in, um, in action. Really, it looks like he's generally is pushing it. Look at that, uh, look at that tire down the bottom there. He's really leaning over there. It looks like he is genuinely pushing that little Capri around the corner. Better image of them headlights, actually, those earlier headlamps where, you know, the headlamp and the indicator are kind of like all one thing. Just to, I just think it's a great little image. Trying to portray great road holding, although I never drove a Capri and thought, wow, this has got great road holding, but nevertheless. Let's have a look at that safety page. So this starts by saying there's a lot more to car safety than a bit of padding on the dashboard, seat belts, and a good set of brakes. If a car is going to be safe, it's got to be designed safe and built safe. And that's what we've done with the Capri. In actual terms, there are two kinds of safety. The first covers all those things that make you less likely to get in trouble. The second covers what's been done to protect you if you do. In the drawing, we pinpointed all the major safety features that we built into the Capri. Some of them you'll notice as soon as you get behind the wheels, like the non-protruding rocker switches, the recessed heater controls, and the relocation of the ignition switch. Others you'll never actually see because they're part of the structure of the car like the fuel tank, safely cradled between the rear wheels and protected on all sides. But whether you see them or whether you don't, one thing's for sure, in emergency, you've got a lot more than a padded dashboard to fall back on. And indeed, a lot of the old car brochures used to say safety features, padded dashboard. So this is trying to say this is much more than that, but straight away it says little line going to crash padding instrument binnacle, fascia top, safety styled, front parcel shelf are all heavily padded. So there you go. It's got front seat belts at extra cost. So you didn't stand to get your front seat belts. So tell you about safety, but not giving you any seat belts unless you ask for them. Uh, protection for their fuel tank, like I say, safety cradled, it's telling us. Shatterproof vanity mirror on the GT models, interior mirror, safety styles to break away on impacts fused electric sy system six fuses padded sun visor progressive deformation front and rear ends collapse uh, non-lift windscreen wipers two speed wipers on the capri gt 
Apple's fabulous safety systems have we got? Oh, we've got a safety breakaway front ashtray, safety door locks, anti-tip seat device, safety styled uh, controls, ignition switch located behind the steering column to prevent knee impact, instruments angled to avoid reflections, uh, front operated two jet windscreen washers. You remember them? Foot operated. Safety steering system with collapsible can. Rear seat belt anchorage points. Belts available as forward accessories. Child safety harness also available as a forward accessory. Interior door handles recessed for safety. Safety styled window winders. So there we go. So there we go. Now the type of features you would have got in this in the 60s with Ford that was deemed of the height of safety. Now we got a picture just entitled Capri. Some lovely shots on this, but let's just read some of the text and see what it's going on about. So Capri, we've told you that Capri sits four people in comfort. We've explained why it's a great car to drive. We've given you all its major safety features. Now I would like to go into a bit more detail about the car itself. In addition to the sumptuous standard seating, you get a heater demister with two speed fan, single wiper, uh, windshield wipers with anti-lift blades, foot, up, foot operated two jet windscreen washers, rectangular sealed beam headlight units with integral side lights, chromed front and rear bumpers, padded sun visors, interior light with courtesy switches, front package tray and rear parcel shelf, an interior boot release, front and rear ashtrays, a well laid out instrument panel, specially angled away from you to avoid reflections and a padded safety steering wheel. Naturally, our airflow system is standard. This changes the air completely every 40 seconds. Cool fresh air comes in through adjustable vents on the fascia and goes out through louvers in the parcel shelf at the back. A short remote floor shift gives you a slick, snickless changing through our superb 4 speed all synchro mesh gearbox. And you also get a diaphragm spring clutch, which helps stamp out ankle cramp. The standard braking system is discs at the front, drums at the back, and the handbrake is floor mounted between the two front seats. There is a range of new colours for the exterior, and the interiors are colour keyed in matching tones. All the things like seats, door pads and so on, are in the colour you choose. The fascia, crash padding and carpets are in a darker tones. On models with blue or beach nut upholstery, you also get headlining to match. So the overall impression inside the Capri is quiet and relaxing, with the emphasis you'd be pleased to hear on the quiet. We have this really rather beautiful image actually of this uh, Capri in silver, a colour that really matches it and shows off its lines really well. In this case it's oh, another 1300 actually. We get a little bit of an image of the colour of these door, door cards on this gold example. And then a little bit of image of those uh, earlier headlamps and of course those, there's those earlier unusual rear tailgate, tail lights I should say, not tailgate, unusual little tail lights which kind of like almost don't really match the car. They would have been lifted from the Mark 1 Escort 71. We got a, a larger unit which I think kind of like matched the car a little bit better, but there we go. And then we can see the Capri script and the uh, Ford lettering on there. And then finally on this particular page, a glimpse into that interior, like I said, for a cheaper car, it actually looks quite nice on the inside. And I think this is one of my favourite pages, actually, entitled the Capri GT. I do like the GT and how they did it, particularly the inside looks really good, doesn't it? Black bonnets on this one as well. We'll certainly come back to the pictures though, but let's read a bit more and learn a bit more about the Capri GT. So there are four GTs to choose from. The 1300 GT, I'm surprised actually they used the 1300 GT, but I guess, like I say, 
That was what the Capri was all about, really, wasn't it? More looks than anything else. 1600 GT, 2000 GT, and of course, the car you really wanted, the 3000 GT. They're basically the same as the Capri, but for the following differences. They have an uprated engine package, radial ply tyres, and an even higher level of interior appointments. For instance, the short stubby gear shift is gated and mounted on a simulated wood finish centre console unit. The finish matches the fascia. The combined arm rest door pulls have added grab handles. You get a vanity mirror, a clock and a cigar lighter as standard equipment. The windscreen wipers are two speed instead of one and the clutch brake and accelerator pedals are fitted with bright chrome metal mouldings. But for the GT driver, probably the biggest difference between this and the Capri is on the dashboard. The GT instrumentation features a circular speedometer, odometer, trip recorder, a circular tachometer to match the speedometer and an oil pressure gauge. Fuel and temperature gauges, a battery condition indicator and warning lights. Also, if after you've been through the engine options you decide to have a 1600 GT, 2000 GT or 3000 GT, so anything other than 1300 GT basically, engine installed, the brakes will be fitted with a mechanical actuated servo and you'll get a close ratio gearbox as standard equipment too. And lastly, if you choose the 3000 GT, which has a V6 engine, you get a power bulge on the bonnet, 0 to 69.2 seconds and 110 miles per hour plus. Pretty slow by today's standards, but back then, what's this, 60, uh, 69 we're saying for this brochure? That would have felt like a pretty quick car in the day. This is actually one of my favourite images. Little Mark One Escort at the back there. Um, and then the four at ground. I'm assuming this is the 3000 GT because we do have that bit of a bonnet bulge on there. Kind of like matching the black bonnet on this and that sort of what looks like a rally version of a Mark One Escort. Looks very nice. Let's just zoom in on the back just to make sure it is the 3 litre. Yes, of course it is. And then yes, we get the interior shot of the GT. And like it says, we get this extra little bit of a wood, which I, I think I quite like actually. It does kind of like, even though I'm not a huge fan of this wood that Ford used to throw in there at this time, the extra bit of wood kind of like, doesn't look too bad, I don't think. Big steering wheel there though, isn't it? Of course, matching interior, this got blue door cards in this example of a blue Capri. And of course, like it said on the dash, there's that bit of extra instrumentation on the GT versions. And during that stubbier four-speed gear lever, and the rev counter, and ooh, we've got a mirror on the sun visor. And a glimpse of the tread pattern on this particular radial ply tyre. And then we get a page to how to order your version of the Capri and engine option. So it certainly goes into a lot of detail on this brochure, but let's learn how to order your version of the Capri. So it tells us here the Capri range is designed to give you much more say in what goes in and on your car. In fact, once you've settled the question of whether to go for the Capri or Capri GT engine, the floor is virtually yours. By going through the six engine options, you can pick the sort of performance you want. By making use of the Capri custom plans, you can decide what your car is going to look like from the outside. What degree of comfort you're going to have on the inside. Whether you stay with vinyl trim seats or go for luxurious brushed nylon cloth. In fact, about the only thing you can't change is the shape of the Capri. We'd like to take credit for that. And then we get this quite a famous -ish image. Actually, I've seen this a few times and you'd be happy to know we have at least moved up to a 1600. 
As we've explained, the idea behind the new car is that you tailor it to suit yourself. And the first job is to decide on the engine you want. There are two engine sizes available for the Capri, 1300 and 1600. The first one gives you a top speed of around 86 miles per hour and gets you from 0 to 60 in 18 seconds. Performance figures for the 1600 are 93 miles per hour, 0 to 60 in 15 seconds. For the GT, there are four engine sizes, 1300, 1600, 2000 and 3000. The 1300 GT will do 94 miles per hour, so straight away, and that's quite the improvement. In fact, showing that that performance of 94 miles per hour is actually more than the 1600 non-GT. And a 0 to 16, 13.5 seconds. So that's a huge improvement from the standard models at 18 seconds, which is really a lifetime, isn't it? The 1600 GT has 100 miles per hour top speed, 0 to 60 time of 12 seconds. 2000 GT gets up to 107 miles per hour and does 0 to 60 in 10.4 seconds. Finally, at the big 3000 GT, it gets up to over 110 miles per hour and does 0 to 60 in 9.2 seconds. And they don't come much nippier than that. The base engine we've used in the Capri is our own race and rally proved cross floor head bowl in piston engine with a five main bearing crankshaft. The 1300 and 1600 are inline engines that are powered us up to 25 national championships and more than 500 separate victories in major events around the world. The 2000 and 3000 GT engines are developed versions of our V4 and V6 units. There are several advantages to the BIP type of engine. In the old and conventional type, the combustion chamber is a dome, figure one, which we'll have a look in a moment, cast in the cylinder head. Into this dome, the piston compresses the petrol-air mixture. It also contains the inlet valve, which controls the amount of petrol and air, the exhaust valve, which gets rid of waste gas and the tip of the spark plug which ignites the mixture. Usually the two valves are on one side, the plug on the other. Fig 2. So there you go, that's figure 1 and figure 2. In our cross floor engine however, there is no dome in the head of the cylinder. Instead, the combustion chamber is hollowed out of the piston itself, hence ball in piston. Figure 3. This gives very close control of the shape, capacity and accuracy of the combustion chamber. It also allows the cylinder head to be flat, which allows us to fit large valves, opening into a more spacious chamber, with no awkward surfaces to impede the even swirl of fuel air vapour coming into the exhaust gases going out. And there we go, there is figure three and figure four. This makes the engine breathe better, so it performs better, uses less fuel and keeps the inner workings cleaner for longer. So in fact, you end up with the best of both worlds, better acceleration, more miles per gallon and higher speeds because of the Capri's aerodynamic styling and power units that you can trust. We do also get this little bit of an under the bonnet image. And then we can learn about these sort of like packs or custom plans that they call them. On the uh, left hand side here, it's telling you about the plan L and custom plan X. And on this side, it's talking about plan R. So let's learn about these different plans. So it tells us you already know the idea behind Capri custom planning. What we'd like to do now is explain just how it works out in practice. It goes like this. You order the option packs you want, we get your order, and we fit exactly what you want to the Capri before it leaves us. This way, we save you the time and the money you'd spend if you left buying your extras until later you'd have to send your Capri back to us. 
and it gives us the opportunity to extra check each extra before we give the final sign off to your car. Plan L is the exterior kit and it's designed for both the Capri and the Capri GT. The full contents comprise, comprise of exhaust trim, locking fuel cap, wheel trims, body side mouldings, dummy air scoops and overriders on both the front and rear bumpers. Plan X is the major interior kit and once again it's for both the Capri and the Capri GT. With this one you'll get fully reclined front seats, separate contoured rear seats and a folding centre armrest. A day night interior mirror, dual horns, a parking brake warning lamp, reversing lights and an additional interior light. You can of course combine both plans to get the XL. And then we get these lovely little images actually look like they're actually a drone images surprisingly all this extra chrome work and then the interior extras i do like the look of those rear seats when they are like that i must admit and then that takes us up to the the capri custom plan R. The Plan R has been specially designed for the GT cars. It contains sculptured road wheels, lever rimmed sport steering wheel, quartz, halogen fog, pass lamps with protected covers, body side mouldings, a map reading lamp, a matte black radiator grill, and a special sports paint scheme in sub gloss black. If you don't want the special paint scheme, just say the word, you'll still get the black grill though. And if you really want to go the whole hog, you can put all three plans together so you end up with everything and an XLR badge on the side of your car. And there we go. I do like that plan R though, it does make it a little bit special. And like it says on there, you don't have to go with that special sports paint scheme in sub gloss black on the bonnet as shown here. But I think you're crazy not to. I think it certainly makes the car stand out. A little bit of look at the wheels and that interior now. Black grille, fog lamps. Even a little map reading lamp. And then at the bottom there. What I particularly like, that sort of black area um, around the, the lights and the number plate. And then finally we get to the individual options. So it tells us in addition to the Capri custom plans, we've also got together a wide range of individual options, as well as such highly desirable items as sports road wheels, reclining and cloth trim seats, radio ply tyres, radio, seat belts, metallic paint finish and many others. We included the latest automatic transmission with a floor mounted T-bar shift. On GT models this is set into the standard console unit. And for those of, of you who don't know just how good automatic driving can be, may, we may as well take this opportunity to explain. With a manual gearbox you carry out nine separate actions with your feet and arms every time you stop and start your car. With an automatic it comes down to only two. You press the brake pedal to stop and the accelerator to go. Automatics make driving far less tiring, much more comfortable. You don't have to think about the engine or the gears and automatic does all the thinking for you. So when you're considering a new Capri, ask for a test drive in a 1600 or 2000 model fitted with automatic transmission. The extra cost won't seem like extra after your first five minutes of clutchless driving. And I guess this all comes from you know, being sort of like in the US, in America, nearly all automatic transmissions. I guess they were trying to yeah, work out if this was going to be a thing in Europe and UK as well, but it really didn't catch on at this time, did it really? Um, having 
in the UK. Even to this day, I think we still prefer driving manuals. Anyway, let's have a look at the images. A look at the seats and another look at those um, rear seats with these two separate seats. I do quite like that. I think it looks quite nice with that armrest going down. We've got, of course, the automatic transmission uh, T-bar, as it calls it, um, which is trying to promote a bit of a radio. Sporty wheels. Back page, we've got a nice green example. This is the 1600 back page, so of course it's more showing the back of the car. So there we go, the Mark 1 Ford Capri. Like I said, I really like this brush. It's some great images and lots of detail and, you know, one of my favourite brushes, actually. I think it's a real good one. I've looked at a Mark 1 Ford Capri before but that time it was more of a fold out brochure style but I'll do a bit of a link to that it was done some time ago so I'm not sure if anyone's ever oh, no, new viewers certainly probably haven't seen that one anyway thank you so much for watching today here on Ford Friday and the Ford Capri Mark 1 and like I said I think it's my favourite Ford Capri actually these early ones now if you're not like to subscribe so far please do so really would be appreciated it does help the channel uh, we have also got a shop open now there's a few items there stickers tops sweatshirts etc you might want to have a look at but more importantly um, membership is now open for quarter light it's a very low price really does help support the channel you're not really getting too much more from the standard viewer but like i say if you do want to support the channel it does help greatly like i say thank you for watching uh, have a great weekend another episode of course tomorrow but do have a great weekend and hope we see you very soon so take care and goodbye <laughs>